welcome back to the Bush Block Homestead. I thought it was about time for an update. Still recovering, uh, still recovering from a bit of a flu, so I haven't had an update for uh, probably three or four weeks now. This flu is just hanging on. Anyway, this is what we've been up to here. This is where our swales are going to go, and this is what you do if you don't have a wood chipper. This is called hoogle culture. So basically all the dead trees and sticks and logs we pick up, we've laid it in a long stack, sort of on the contour that we're going to follow, and there'll be a trench dug in the front of this to create the swale. And if we look back further there, there's another pile of sticks and brush back there. So all this will be covered. We'll mulch all this and the soil that's dug out from the front to create the swale will go onto this stick mound and eventually all those sticks and things will rot down over a long period of time. It's a permaculture technique called hoogle culture. Let's see we've got some more here. So yeah, as we haven't yet got a, a wood mulcher, next best thing to do with all the dead trees and sticks around the yard. There's another one back there again. <clears throat> we'll just head over this way and have a look at some some of our chickens. There's a bit of dust flying there. One must be digging up a bit of ground for a dust bath. They'll probably all come running over as I as I approach, thinking I've got some food for them. Here they come running. So this is in that portable electric fence pen. We haven't got it hooked up to power at the moment. We'll just go in there. The lid's up on the the trailer. We've had a bit of wind lately. So I'll just put that down on their nesting box. So converted the old box trailer because it was had a bit of rust in it into their night pen and it's got a nesting box each side for the chickens to lay their eggs in. They've been a bit off the lay lately. I've been off the lay a bit lately due to the cooler weather. Uh, it's the middle of winter here but you wouldn't know it. It's like 25 degrees at the moment. It's been a fairly warm winter. So I'd hate to see what summer's going to be like. She'll be in the mid 40s I'd say. But you can see the last area here that the chooks were. You can see that nice regrowth over there. That's from old seed and their manure has been put down so we get the regrowth come back after the chooks have moved on. So we'll go and have a look at our other chickens that, I've, that we've moved into another pen. Well over here you can see we've got another pen and a, another one under construction. These are six metre long six meters long by three meters wide and this pen here is going to be our breeding pen so at the moment there's our rooster it's a silky and we're just going to have bantam chooks in here though so these two isa browns are in here at the moment because they've been escapees from the other pen so they're in here at the moment to teach them a lesson not to escape but they'll eventually be put back into the other pen with the other isa browns so they've just got a couple of bantams and there's another silky hiding up the back. It's a bit shy. There she is. And here's the rooster, which is a silky as well. And he likes to have a go at you if you go in there, as most roosters do. And here's the other pen that I'm currently constructing to put some other chooks in there. We put grass in there for them to mulch down. 
this uh, cage here we'll be putting chooks in and we'll be putting mulch and grass clippings in there and eventually we'll pull the chooks back out and put uh, gardens in there and the mesh cage will protect the produce in the gardens from the wildlife because we get a lot of birds and ducks and things we also let our geese run around so that's what eventually is happening to this pen here once I finish constructing it I've got most of it done it's all plastic coated mesh will help it help stop corrosion I've got a cable tie all the this bottom down yet you can see I've started the front I've got most of that done which I've done today in our last video we were talking about troubles with our 12 volt system that controls the the water pump for the house as well as our hot water system our solar hot water setup you can see up there those two panels I've raised the angle of them they're two 80 watt panels connected in parallel 12 volt and they run go down to the 12 volt charge controller in the pump shed and that has helped in the winter due to the lower angle of the sun to help keep that battery charged. We'll go and have a look at the pump shed. We've made a few changes in there. Haven't done anything else with the solar hot water system. We're still using the gas backup system at this stage until I do some changes to the solar hot water system. During the winter months it's just not getting hot enough though in summer, which by the feel of it won't be that far away, it'll be back to how it was operating before winter. Anyway, we'll have a look at the power shed to see what we've done to help with our 12 volt system charge up. Well, you can hear the rooster going off there. Well, you can see we've made a few changes there to the charging system. So this is all the 12 volt system, the 12 volt batteries outside. And what I did, I've upgraded the cables from the solar panels on the roof. Originally that 12 volt system was used as our charging station. While the house was being built, we used it to charge the laptop, computer and phones and things. You'll be able to see the charging station on a previous video. Anyway, we only use real small cables. Well, this was the cable coming from the roof, similar to that size from the solar panel and that was restricting, we were getting a bit of voltage drop there using those cables. I've upgraded the solar from the roof now with 6mm cable. As you can see, we've got a, an isolation switch for the battery and I've also upgraded the solar controller to a proper MPPT controller. The one we had in here was labelled as, as an MPPT controller but was not. It was a very inefficient controller. It wasn't MPPT at all. Where this one can take up to a hundred volt input, it can and it can be used to charge either 12 volt, 24 volt, or 48 volt with a hundred volt input. And I've just had a bit of a clean up and movement of some of the controls, the switches, and things. So. The new components is basically the battery switch and the solar controller and the upgraded cabling from the solar panel and also the increase the size of the cabling from the battery into the charge controller. And that has made a, a great difference to our system. The solar panels on the roof, I haven't put any more panels up there, just increase the uh, angle. As you can see now, it's at 13.1 there. Now we may increase the amount of solar on the roof in the future as well as increase our battery storage as we only have one 100 amp hour battery in the system at the moment and basically it just runs the the water system for the house I think we'll at least double that to at least two 100 amp hour batteries just to give us better capacity overnight well there's a little bit of an update Thanks for joining us on the Bush Block Homestead. We'll catch you again next time. See ya.